you touch on the idea of ideologies. Uh, it's quite a strong feeling in Australia that ideology is dangerous. Yeah. We're a pragmatic people. We should just get on with life. In reality, like great and powerful ideas everywhere, ideology has had and will continue to have a massive influence on how we live. So, for example, I mean, I share your concern that we will shortly face the very real prospect that ideas that are deemed to be harmful to people's well-being, mental well-being or otherwise, will be outlawed and that that will result in the shutting down of some very important debates. Yes. Um, but on the other hand, if we stand back, the idea that you can do away with ideologies is to say that nobody can debate from a logical perspective. You slip into opportunism uh, and into managerialism uh, and if even populism. Where do you see the great debates amongst, you know, once it was socialism, it was communism, it was free enterprise, it was capitalism. Um, now it seems to be about the upturned stool of liberalism and all of these issues of racism, of transgenderism and so on and so forth, which as Douglas Murray points out, very hard to build a stable society on them, a working and functional and cooperative society. But where do you see the great debates going now about what we believe as we hopefully start to come out of COVID? I think what I think in terms of there are a few things going on just in terms of the state of debate around the West. I think there there are technological reasons for why uh, debate has taken such a downturn and and become so vitriolic. I think in the old days there were serious gatekeepers to the media and only ideas of a certain quality and a certain thoughtfulness, even if they were of a particular ideology, were sort of allowed sort of air to breathe. Uh, whereas with um, social, whereas with uh, yeah, social media, anyone can have a blog, anyone can tweet, anyone can make a Facebook post. And what that means is anyone can whip up a kind of virtual mob to demonize another person and try to destroy their career, uh, namely what we call cancel culture. So in try to understand, trying to understand the, the state of current debate, it's not all ideology, although I'll get to the ideology in a second. Some of it is just technology, which has allowed every Tom, Dick and Harry to have an opinion. Whereas 20 years ago, if they'd sent their letter into the newspaper or sent their article in, uh, it would have been thrown straight in the bin. Uh, there are good things about that because what it mean, also means is that we can hold the media to account. And that's actually a really, really good thing. But the downside is that debate can easily slip into abuse. Uh, you still have debates today. You still have rational debates. But the problem is that they're crowded out and shouted down by the less rational activity that often takes place at the level of social media. And that's, that's the problem. The problem today is not that we don't have rational debates taking place. The problem is that too often we can't hear them over the yelling and the, what I would call the cacophony of so much social media, which again has made cancel culture possible. Yeah, because I would add to that over the cacophony, but it's more than that, the intimidation. Absolutely. And the bullying. Oh, absolutely. Um, you know, nowadays, of course, it's becoming increasingly common for people to self-censor because, again, once upon a time, if you'd have said something and someone took issue with it, there are only a handful of people that they could have told and it wouldn't have really gone anywhere. But nowadays, if you say something, there are people on social media who literally have access to thousands upon thousands of people who can all get together and again form what I called earlier a virtual mob and then attack your place of work or wherever and basically try to destroy your livelihood, cancel culture. So there's a technological aspect to the state of modern debate. But there is also, there, I, I do believe that there is a kind of ideological aspect. And I think part of it may be that as a culture, again, with the, maybe with the decline of Christianity, we've lost a common consensus on what it is to be a human being, what human beings are meant to be doing on earth, 
a common consensus of just basic principles of morality, which used to be, um, which, which everyone used to generally adhere to. And now we're at a point where we've almost got morally and normatively just nothing in common anymore. And what I mean by that is, in Australia, we had raging debates on socialism and capitalism in the 19th century, in the, 20, in the first half of the 20th century. People disagreed deeply on those things. But whether you were liberal or labor, you still agreed on deeper issues about you know, what it is to be a human being, um, issues of, of morality. You know, people agreed on that kind of thing. And it was on the issues such as what is the right economic system that we ought to have. That's what we disagreed on. But now we're in an age where not only will people disagree on what the right economic system ought to be, whether it ought to be socialism or capitalism or some other ism, but they will disagree all the way down to the ground on what it is to be a human being, what it is to be a male, what it is to be a female, uh, what a family is. Things that, again, in the old days, people did not disagree on, things that we all held in common. And so when you combine the sort of lack of consensus on very deep questions of human identity, human morality, and I would even say human destiny, when you combine that with the current ability for social media to amplify the most irrational, unreasonable, vitriolic voices, then you wind up uh, in a society that quite in many ways um, what we're seeing is, is frankly tearing itself apart. Uh, and that is in a sense where we're at uh, today. And so where are, what are the future ideologies? Well, I think in some ways we're always going to have the debates over uh, what the proper economic system ought to be, whether it ought to be capitalism, whether it ought to be socialism, whether it ought to be a sort of golden mean in between, something like social democracy. Those debates are still going. But we're now seeing new kinds of ideologies arising. And they, like I said, they've been arising over the last 40 years. And one of them I mentioned earlier, sort of therapeuticism, uh, the idea that the good life is a life of mental well-being, and therefore, anyone who does not experience mental well-being is being denied a right. And if you can say that someone else is making you feel bad about yourself, then you have identified the person who is violating your rights. And what is the state other than an institution that stops people's rights from being violated? So you invoke the state to silence that person or stop them doing what they're doing. So that's the, that's the therapeutic uh, ideology that's really coming through. The other ideology that's become very prominent, and you've spoken about this, this with other guests, is what is nowadays sort of called wokeness, or what is now being called a kind of great awakening. Uh, and, and that is essentially the idea, uh, as we discussed earlier, that basically all prevailing institutions in Western society, all prevailing practices, and all ideologies and ideas are absolutely irredeemably tainted or vitiated by the new sins of racism, homophobia, and patriarchy. And this is a radical, a radical ideology in that it seeks to, to overturn all existing institutions and kind of start again from year zero. In this respect, wokeism is uh, an air of the French Revolution and the Russian Revolution, not revolutions like the British Revolution of 1688 or the American Revolution of, six, of 1776, both of which sought to re-establish practices that they thought had recently been violated. They were, in a sense, revolutions to re-establish traditions. Uh, the French Revolution of 1789 and the Russian Revolution of 1970, 1917 were revolutions to sweep everything away and start again. And certainly wokeism and the riots and protests that we're seeing in America right now, uh, spearheaded by Black Lives Matter and also Antifa, they are very much a legacy of the French Revolution and the Russian Revolution. Their view is that everything is so horribly tainted and vitiated by the sins, I deliberately use the word sin, of racism and patriarchy and homophobia and all the other sins that they need to be swept away entirely. 
Uh, there is nothing redeeming in it. And that is another ideology that we're having to deal with. Did you enjoy this episode? We cannot get good public policy out of a bad debate. If you value vital conversations like this one, please like, share, subscribe, and join the conversation.